Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from The Ratchet Lectors. And today I'm talking about exclusives for the Sega Dreamcast. Exclusives are a very important part to any game library. Take PS4 for example. The exclusives on that console alone help it win the console manufacturing race for this current generation. Games like Infamous Second Son, The Last of Us, God of War, Spider-Man. All these games helped Sony take a stranglehold on the much lackluster Xbox brand. Exclusives do have the ability to gather one community or one set amount of people to a console. And with PlayStation 4 grabbing the most amount of attention, that's why it's winning the console race this generation. But the Sega Dreamcast also had its list of exclusives. And today I'm gonna to run through at least five games that never made it on any other console, much like the Xbox, the PlayStation 2, or the GameCube. Draconis Cult of the Worm is a game that's done fairly well. Graphics don't hold up by today's standards, but it does serve a purpose in the gameplay. Developed by Treyarch and released June 22, 2000, Draconis is a hack and slash action RPG with the ability to choose one of two playable characters. Sinric the Warrior or Eowyn the Sorceress. Draconis boasts 15 indoor and outdoor locations and has 30, yes 30 detailed enemies. Draconis has a similar gameplay style as Elder Scrolls games where the hack and slash is a heavy gameplay element. Though the gameplay of Draconis is fairly fluid, it did only come to sell 35,519 units. Floygan Brothers. Floygan Brothers is an episodic game that features two brothers, Hoigl and Moigl. Developed by Visual Concepts and released July 30th, 2001, you are Hoigl and Moigl, two brothers that are controlled by the player and interacting with various items in the game world. For example, Hoigl is controlled by the player and is required at times to fetch certain items for various puzzles. Moigl will set certain fetch quests and you are to deliver them back to him. As more quests are acquired, you are at times are in need of Moigl to access certain areas in the world. Albeit a bit confusing to describe, it takes minutes of gameplay to figure out for yourself. Though set to be an episodic game, with various DLC to be made available through Sega servers. The Dreamcast was cancelled and the DLC thought locked onto the disc and no access to it. The Dreamcast community figured a workaround that allows you to have access to various outfits, quests, and unlockables. Floygan Brothers feels very much like a Saturday morning cartoon of yesteryear. It only sold 19,886 units total, which is unfortunate because playing through this game, even just five minutes of this game, you get the sense of camaraderie between the two brothers. It is set in such a comedic way that it's unbelievable that the Dreamcast was able to put like a Saturday morning cartoon on disc and you're playing through it. And you, it's like I said, the, com the comedic elements alone make this game a, a sleeper pick. And it's unfortunate that not many gamers are going to actually play it. And unfortunate that no other console actually picked up the rights to it. If you haven't had the opportunity to play Floygan Brothers, give yourself the opportunity to play. If you have a Dreamcast, do it. This is a game that does deserve its time in the light. Four Wheel Thunder. Developed by Kalisto Entertainment, released May 4th, 2000. Four Wheel Thunder is an arcade racer that many arcade goers came to love. Quick gameplay, fluid 60 frames per second, and shortcuts galore. It also features two player split screen, which is couch co-op at its finest. Four Wheel Thunder has tons of unlocks, shortcuts, and power-ups. With that being said, it also features a difficult, damn near infuriating AI that sometimes seems like it's driving on rails when taking corners. Four Wheel Thunder, much like any other racing game, has you starting in a field of opponents but in last place and it's up to you to, to make your way up the pack. But unlike games in the same genre, Four Wheel Thunder's AI is remarkable and rarely ever make a mistake, forcing you to drive like a savant, never making a mistake. Four Wheel Thunder sold 59,601 unit and does feature a lot of Midway's classic power-up systems that allow you to play a racing game like no other, Carrier. Developed by Jalico, released January 31st, 2001. Carrier is another survival horror game, much like Resident Evil and Dino Crisis. Carrier is set in, you guessed it, a carrier, a ship destined to reach land and infected with a deadly virus. You play as two special forces operatives, Jack Ingalls and Jessifer Manning. Jessifer is available through gameplay progression. Graphically, Carrier isn't a horrible looking game and features decent sprite work. Carrier also has a decent feature which allows you to have access to a scope earlier on in the game and that allows you to scan NPCs to see if they are infected with the killer virus. While scanning, it shows a safe zone or danger and allows you to deal with the enemy at hand. It also does feature a marking system where you can 
target specific areas of the enemy tentacles legs arms whatever and allows you to take aim at these specific things a little bit clunkily but it does still feature a good control scheme. Though a late release, Carrie did manage to sell 67,003 units on a dying system, Coasterworks. Developed by Zycat Interactive, released December 10th, 2000. Coasterworks is a single player simulator that allows the player to build an epic roller coaster. Coasterworks features the ability to view your coaster from various angles and has 3D coaster models that you could play through and see the outcome of the ride as, that you built. Coasterworks sold 37,848 units. And for a simulator again, that's a pretty decent amount for a system that was only around for two years. The Sega Dreamcast features so many great games that were exclusive for the console. Games like Floyd and Brothers, which felt like a Saturday morning cartoon, like I said in earlier in the video. It was a sleeper hit that nobody ever played. And it's unfortunate. I'm gonna be making more of these types of videos so that we could all discover for ourselves great exclusives that the Sega Dreamcast had and people never really played please like comment subscribe let me know what you guys think feel free to drop a comment down below if you played any of these games thanks guys